So on this week's episode of Dating After a Toxic Relationship, I have something a little different uh, that I want to talk about. Something that I, th I don't really know that I was ever thinking about talking about this, but it's holidays and birthdays and how different it is going from a toxic relationship into a healthy relationship, celebrating someone's birthday or having holidays, that sort of thing. Um, I think that's something that we really don't think about because I know for me, I didn't really think about this when I started dating again. I wasn't thinking about someone's birthday. I wasn't thinking about how the holidays would go or anything like that. And I'm finding that we don't really know how things are going to go until we start going through them. So we don't know what a first fight's going to look like because we don't, when we start to think about dating, we don't think like, oh no, what if we get into a fight? Or what are we going to do for the birthday? Or how am I going to meet so-and-so's friend? Or you don't think of those things. All you really think about is being brave enough and strong enough to put yourself out there again. And that's usually the first step, which is a great step. But then once you get into it, once you start like living it and experiencing it, we come across a few things that are so um, little difficult to deal with. So I want to talk a little bit about um, birthdays right now. So my birthday and the person I've been dating his birthday. It's um, birthdays for me kind of growing up really weren't celebrated very much. So I like to celebrate my birthday. I love celebrating other people's birthdays. I think it's so fun. I think it's like the best, the best part of anything, whether it's my kids or if it's the person I'm with or, you know, friends or whatever. I love doing that. It's just, it's fun. Birthdays are amazing. Balloons and cake. Is there anything better? I don't think so. So when I had my birthday during my toxic relationship, um, they weren't fun. They weren't easy to get through. It was kind of rough. I remember having him at my house for a little birthday gathering where he was gonna meet my friends for the first time and I had like a cake and stuff and I remember my friends being in the kitchen and him being in the other room by himself kind of sitting in the corner and I tried to get him to come in and, and see everybody and he had no interest. So when everyone left, I remember him getting mad at me and yelling at me and telling me that I was terrible and how could I do this to him, blah, 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 all this and I was like, wait, what? Um, other birthdays after that, Usually the day before he would somehow get into a huge fight with me, break up with me, and then the next day after my birthday, just be like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, it was no big thing. So my birthday was completely ruined anytime it was my birthday. It was pretty bad. Um, and then his birthday. his You would think, like, maybe his birthday would be okay because all the focus was on him, all the attention was on him, but it really wasn't. It was one of those things where he would find any kind of excuse to get mad and stop talking to me and make it just horrible so he could tell me that I ruined his birthday. Um, there were a few a few things that I did. I remember the one thing I did for his birthday, I had someone come to my house and do a little, like a little spread, I guess, of like different birthday cake and different things that he liked. Um, and I was so excited about it. And then when he got to the house and he looked at everything, Instead of being like, oh, wow, this is so nice. Like, thank you so much. He was like, you have serious issues. Serious issues for celebrating your birthday. So he caused a huge fight and left. Um, later found out that he was cheating on me, which is why he left to go celebrate his birthday with someone else. But at the time, I was just like, wow, what the heck? And every birthday that I celebrated with him was somehow ruined and it was just miserable. So it just, it was never any fun. And I love celebrating birthdays when... I was married, unfortunately my dad ooh, passed away on my ex-husband's birthday. So there, as much as I tried to help him celebrate his birthday, there really wasn't much going on and I don't really think he's much of a birthday person anyway. Um, I tried, I tried my best to kind of make it more about him than about my dad and um, never really worked because he never really wanted to celebrate his birthday, which is some people don't and that's fine. But that was really hard for me because I really like to celebrate Especially on a day like that, it would have been great to put the focus on something else. Um, but since we've been divorced now, I use that day to just kind of think about my dad and that sort of thing. But anyway, so after spending a long time on my own, on a long time being single, having my birthday, I'd celebrated a whole bunch. I would sometimes celebrate it for two, three, four weeks, you know, that sort of thing. I know I've talked about this before. Um, but this was the first time that I was able to celebrate someone else's birthday. So I was really excited about this. I was like, okay... 
you know, now it was like the time was kind of creeping up. And I remember like the first few days before his birthday, I I wasn't really sure how to approach it. I wasn't really sure like what to say. I just kind of one of those things where you go into it and you don't really know what's going to happen. And you have like you're afraid it might be the same sort of experiences you've had before. So but you can't just ignore it. So I asked him, what do, you, what do he want to do? Da, da, da. And he told me what he wanted to do. He wanted to go to dinner, that sort of thing. So um, I made plans for dinner. I made reservations at a restaurant. I called a cake lady, had a cake made for him, had it sent to the restaurant. So after dinner, when we got to the restaurant, I would surprise him with that. And I was super psyched about this. And then I got him an amazing gift, which I'm so excited about. Like. I was excited about getting him this gift. And then um, I ordered wrapping paper for him with his face on it. I was so excited about that. So I was like, this is gonna be fun. Hopefully this is gonna be really good because he's super easy for the most part. Um, you know, I couldn't imagine him getting upset with me for his birthday, but at the same time, you just never know because this was our first, this is my first year celebrating his birthday with him and I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea um, what kind of a birthday person he was. And if you ask somebody, like at some point, like what kind of a birthday person are you? They may look at you and be like, what the heck kind of question is that? So um, the day came, we had to celebrate his birthday a few days early because he had to work on his actual birthday. So we went to the restaurant and it was great because we got in the car, drove to the restaurant the whole way there. We had a conversation and we talked and there was no fight, which was awesome. I wasn't pushed out of the moving car, uh, which I didn't really expect to be, but I, you know, I was driving, so that would've been kind of crazy. But um, got to the restaurant, sat down, had a great conversation, talked, laughed, had fun, um, ate the dinner, that sort of thing, and that was great. Everything went off really well. There was a little bit of a situation with the cake, but then when the cake did come out, okay, this is, I've been waiting for this. I was waiting for this cake, so when the cake came out, and they brought it to the table. He had oh, just the biggest smile on his face, just genuine, a huge smile on his face. And he loved it. He loved it. And he actually said that he loved it. He kept looking at it. He thought it was amazing. He couldn't believe it. He thought it was great. And he was genuinely happy. He was happy the whole entire night where he wasn't mad or angry or drunk or yelling at me or anything like that. He thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed being there with me. And for me, this was a first because every other birthday I had had some kind of something attached to it where it wasn't fun and it wasn't exciting. It was miserable. And man, I can't wait for this to, to be over. But he sat there across from me and he had a huge smile on his face and he was so excited. He took his camera out and he was taking pictures of this amazing cake and he was so happy. So he stayed there for a little bit and then um, went back home. Then on his actual birthday, I showed up at his house, well, waited till midnight, so I told him happy birthday, he was excited about that, and then I showed up at his house with uh, a balloon and his birthday present, and um, by the time I went home that night, I was in tears because I was so happy. It sounds insane, but it was like, okay, like got through my birthday, got through his birthday, and it was awesome. So different from anything I had experienced ever. And it made me so happy that I cried. Or I was so grateful to have that experience of being with someone that appreciated me, being with somebody that wanted to be with me, being with somebody that didn't want to pick a fight with me, didn't want to insult me or leave and go with somebody else. He genuinely wanted to be with me. And it makes me um, emotional because of how happy I am, because it feels really good. And then it also makes me emotional for all the time I wasted on someone else when I could have been either on my own or with somebody that appreciated me. And the big thing about this is like, if you are in a toxic relationship and you're having miserable holidays and you're having miserable birthdays and you're just trying so hard to please someone that can just never be happy, just if you think about leaving because on the other side of it is somebody who's going to smile at you with a genuine smile and mean it. And for me, that was the first time I've experienced that. And it was awesome, it was the best feeling ever. Like, I try to explain to him sometimes like how I feel about things and how amazing it is. And sometimes I think he thinks I'm nuts, but, cause he doesn't really understand the toxic abusive relationships. But um, 
it just, it's, it's, it's nice and it feels so good to not be afraid. It feels so good to be able to talk to someone or argue with someone and not be called names and not be hit and not be put down and not have someone ignore you for five days and then come around like nothing ever happened. It feels nice to tell someone how you feel. And even though they can't understand it, they stop what they're doing and they look at you and they pay attention to you. It feels really nice. It's such a good feeling. And if you're going through a toxic relationship or you're out of one and you're thinking about going back because it's something that's comfortable to you, it's something that you miss, it's something that you, the idea of being with someone else is too scary, uh, heal. Take as much time as you need to heal because on the other side of it is so much good waiting for you. There's so much good. Even if you're by yourself, even if you spend two or three or even five years like I did on your own celebrating your birthday and celebrating holidays, it's totally worth it because when a good person comes around, a genuinely good person comes around, everything is worth it. You look back on it and you just think to yourself, oh my gosh, thank God I healed. Thank God I went through this because you're going to meet someone and that's waiting for you to get healthy. The person you're supposed to be with is right now patiently waiting for you to get healthy, waiting for you to get through what you need to do and be ready for them. Because I know for me with this person, if I met him two years ago, it would not have worked. It wouldn't have lasted as long as it's lasted. It wouldn't be as amazing as it is now. And I think, you know, all relationships have their ups and downs. They have their struggles. They have, you know, things they have to work out. Um, you have to get to know someone, you have to understand, like, you have to understand them a little bit more and understand, like, what they may take offense to, what they may not take offense to, what triggers them, that sort of thing. And it's a learning process, but it's also super worth it. It's also super worth having someone that you can call and tell good news to that's genuinely happy or someone you can say, I'm having a rough day and they really care about what you're saying and, like, how you're feeling about things. It's, it's totally worth it. So if you're going through something like that where you're in it and you're thinking about getting out, try to make a plan to really do that. And then if you're out of something and you're thinking about going back in, don't do it. Ugh, just don't do it because there's so much good waiting on this side. This is the better side, the healthy side. Try to find a recovery program. Try to find a therapist, someone that can understand. Um, I myself am a relationship dating coach and I've been helping people stay out of, get away from their toxic relationship and not go back. Um, find somebody who can do that. Um, because it's worth it. It's worth getting away and it's worth facing the loneliness, facing your fears, facing how you feel society is going to treat you because you're single. Once you're out of something, you have to heal before you can move on. You can't go from this to this and expect someone to be there and, and take care of your needs for you. You have to do that on your own first. But do it. It's totally worth it. Um, if you need help with any of that, check out my website, kellysmithauthor.com. Under the relationship coach, I have all of my information there where I can help you. I do constant contact. I do stuff like that. And it's um, it's definitely worth it. So I'm having a special right now if you want to check it out. But anyway, this whole year has been a um, learning process. It's been amazing. It's been fun. It's been irritating. It's been super frustrating. It's been all the different things that a healthy sort of relationship should be. And it's amazing. It's so much better than what I thought it was going to be. I was so afraid of getting back into something because I thought I would um, go back to who I was before. And I really haven't because I've healed so much and I've learned so much. Obviously, I have more to go. But so far, it's been it's been really good. So like I said, if you're getting out of something, don't go back. And if you're in something right now that's making you just miserable, um, start to think about leaving and taking the steps toward leaving.